it's Dr. Joe DeMarco, chiropractor and owner of Oak Vermont Health. On today's video, we're going to talk about a little muscle that causes a lot of big problems regarding elbow pain. Before we do, if you want to learn the importance of exercise, nutrition, and mental strength in regards to staying healthy, then pick up a copy of my book. It's called A Fitness Carol. It's available at www.fitnesscarol.com. You can go straight to Amazon, pick it up in paperback form or audio version being narrated by yours truly, the guy with the bad Boston accent. Also, we're still clearing out these SRI 3.0 massage guns at www.okramenhealth.com. They're uh, marked down, they're only $99. There's eight different attachments, a super powerful battery. They run really, really quiet. So when you get a chance, check it out on the website and pick up an SRI massage gun before they are out. We are clearing out inventory on these, okay? If you haven't done so already, take a moment right now, subscribe to my channel, Okra Med Health on YouTube. Click that little bell notification. It notifies you every time I upload a new video. At the end of today's video, if you found the information helpful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. So on today's video, I'm gonna show you how to finally get rid of your tennis elbow pain. That pain along the outside of the elbow, technically it's called lateral epicondylitis. That's because the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, that bony part of the outside of the elbow is usually where if you press into it is where you feel the majority of your pain. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I mentioned we're gonna talk about a little muscle that causes a lot of big problems for your elbow. That little muscle is called the extensor carpi radialis brevis. Why do they put such long names on such little muscles? That's the name of it. I hope I can say this correctly throughout the video. But the extensor carpi radialis brevis, a lot of times is a, is, is a primary reason why you're experiencing your tennis elbow pain. So quickly, let's talk about that muscle so we can understand why it's causing a problem. And by understanding the anatomy, we're gonna understand how we're gonna go about fixing this thing. Now, that particular muscle originates right off of the lateral epicondyle. So that's where the tendon attachment is. And this muscle comes off that lateral epicondyle, it comes down the forearm, and about halfway down, it actually just turns into a long tendon that attaches to the back of what's known as the third metacarpal. It's the bone in your hand, right in the center. And because of this anatomy, when this muscle contracts, it extends the wrist. So that's the, 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 uh, the function we're talking about today with this muscle. So, why is, this, why is this muscle bothering our lateral epicondyle? A lot of it has to do with overuse. This muscle can, over time, build up a lot of wear and tear. Now, you don't have to be a tennis player to get wear and tear on, the, on this particular muscle. You can do it just during your daily activities, because every time you're grabbing something and you're picking something up, that the extensor carpi radialis brevis is, is firing so that your wrist doesn't flop down. And so I'm grabbing a, a, a container of orange juice out of the refrigerator, I'm picking something up, it, this muscle's firing and it's working so that the wrist doesn't flop down. If you're in the gym, you're weightlifting, a lot of times lateral raises, you know, you may, maybe you're adding too much weight too quickly. Well, when you're raising that arm up, the reason that wrist doesn't flop down is because of that muscle is working and it starts placing stress into the tendon over here and it starts breaking down this muscle. When muscles start to get a lot of wear and tear over the course of the day, day after day after day, you're gonna start building up what we call fascial adhesions or that's just another name for scar tissue. And when muscles form scar tissue, they become shorter, they become less elastic and you can think of scar tissue as, as like, like almost like knots in the muscle. The muscle loses elasticity it becomes, like I said, less elastic. It's almost like having strips of leather in there instead of elastic bands. And so this muscle doesn't stretch as well. When it doesn't stretch as well, muscles start to tug and pull. And where do they tend to tug and pull? Where they originate, where the tendon attachment is. And so in this case, this muscle loses elasticity. It starts tugging and pulling now every time we use it. And where's the tugging and pulling taking place? On the outside of the elbow with the lateral uh, lateral epicondyle and cause a lot a lot of pain these problems sometimes I have patients come in I've treated a lot of lateral epicondyl, uh, epicondylitis because my office is actually inside of a large tennis club so I can't tell you how many hundreds and hundreds of cases of tennis elbow along with my weightlifting clients that come in with 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 tennis elbow pain 
So this is a, a problem that people come in and they tell me they've had it for six months, 12 months, two years. It goes on, it comes, goes back and forth. It, it, sometimes it feels a little better, feels a little worse. But it's one of those injuries that can be such a nagging, debilitating injury. So what we're doing today is we're going to go over three things regarding the Carpi, the extension of the Carpi radialis preface. We're going to go over how to do some fascia release work on it so we can get back that elasticity and stop the pulling on the tendon. We're going to go over a great stretch and we're going to go over how to strengthen it. All right, so stay tuned. We're going to get right into it. So the first thing we're going to go over, which is probably the most important aspect of this whole way of treating this injury, is, is the fascia release work. We need to restore the elasticity to this muscle. We have to put an end to that tugging on the tendon. Now I'm going to show you a lot of different ways to break up the adhesions in this muscle, ranging anywhere from just using your own knuckles and your fingers in there to much more effective ways of doing it, uh, to doing it using some fascia release tools, okay? But if you don't have any fascia release tools, well, one is I would strongly recommend getting some, but if you don't, everything we go over today, you can just use like your thumb or your knuckles on the area. So what I wanna do is I want you to see exactly what, how we're gonna go about this, is I want everyone, I wanna bring everyone in closer, okay? Okay, so the very first thing we wanna do here is I wanna help you locate the extensor carpi radialis brevis. And I want you to differentiate it from a muscle known as the brachioradialis. Now the brachioradialis is a thicker forearm muscle. It's called the hammering muscle. And, and the, one of the functions of the brachioradialis is when your wrist is in this position is to flex the elbow. And that's why it's called the hammering muscle. So if I was to put resistance and push into my hand here, the brachioradialis muscle pops up. And we just want to differentiate that because that is not the extensor cop carpi radialis brevis. This is the brachioradialis. Now, the important thing to, to know about the brachioradialis is it does uh, uh, contract when we do elbow flexion. However, it does not cross the wrist joint. So if we do wrist extension, the brachioradialis does not contract. And that's how we can locate it and differentiate it. So in other words, I push up here, I fire that brachioradialis, I can kind of feel it in my fingers here. If I was to relax it and just kind of move my wrist, it's nice and soft and relaxed, okay? So what I would recommend doing is fire the muscle, feel where it is, and then go off to the side here and push into this area. Now, this is the area of the extensor carpi radialis brevis. And if now, if I have my fingers in here and I extend the wrist, I can feel the muscle contract underneath there. So that's how we're gonna differentiate it so you're not on the wrong muscle group. So you can feel that muscle contract under here. So this is where we're gonna be working into this area, like I said, from the lateral epicondyle down the forearm. First thing we wanna do is get a bunch of blood flowing in there. And before we do anything, I would strongly recommend placing some massage cream. You can use hand cream at your house, but something that's, that's gonna give a little bit of glide without being too greasy. Like I wouldn't recommend putting any oils on it. Oils can be very slippery, but like a massage cream or a hand cream gives just enough glide so that your, your skin doesn't get abused while you're doing this. You don't wanna be damaging your skin, but it'll allow your fingers in, in to glide along the tissue. Oils, a lot of times can make it too slippery. You know, you'll feel your hands, you can't, you'll never you'll feel like you can never get a good uh, grip on it because the oils are slippery, whereas the massage cream just gives a nice glide. So I would rec highly recommend using some massage cream so that you don't, like I said, damage the skin during the fascia release work. So first thing I wanna do is get blood flowing into the muscle here. And you can do this, once again, without any instruments or any uh, tools, just using your fingers. It's just kinda find the muscle and just go do some cross friction type of massage. So the muscle's running this way. So I would just kinda go back and forth just like that, all the way up towards the lateral epicondyle, I'm just kind of going side to side, and take your time. Like, you know, I would make this pass last, you know, 60 seconds, so I'm going nice and slow, just up and down, you know, side to side like this. Like I said, the it, it's, it's what we call some cross friction massage in there. And try to put in as much pressure as you can. If you feel like you're losing the muscle, flex the wrist, um, uh, excuse me, extend the wrist back and forth so you can find where the muscle is. Now, 
If you want to get a little deeper in there, if you have a spiky massage ball, this is a Tai Chi ball from Okra Med Health. It's a regular size Tai Chi ball. You can use this. This is a great way these little spikes will get in even deeper and you can just kind of dig in with this ball just like that. Now, if you find as you're digging up across the extensor carpi radialis brevis, if you, as you're digging up towards the lateral epicondyle, if you feel an area where there's a particular knot, spend a little extra time on it. Like, you know, I find the knot right there. It's a little, you can just feel it. It's a little tighter. It's a little, maybe a little tender. Is just stay right on that knot for an extra 30 or 40 seconds and, and dig around on that knot for a little bit while, a little bit longer. You can also just press direct pressure into that knot and hold that for about 30 seconds. So you can start with your thumb. The spiky massage ball is great. If you have an FF5 from Okra Med Health, it's a stainless steel massage instrument. You can do the cross friction massage this way. This is a great way to get in there. Is, is um, Use the FF5 so that you can actually get right in on that muscle. Like I said, find it if you're know, moving move the wrist and then go back and forth with the FF5 and you can really get in deep with this instrument and get do some cross friction massage on that muscle, okay? By the time you're done doing, just doing some cross friction massage, you should notice it's gonna be red, it's, it's gonna be pinkish reddish, that's okay. Soft tissue work gets a lot, a lot of blood flow in there and, and, and some people have very sensitive you know, skin, the next day you could have a red spot, the next day you might even have a little black and blue, that's okay. You're not damaging anything, you're getting in there and you're breaking up scar tissue, okay? So, cross friction massage is the first thing we're gonna do. Then we're gonna use some techniques. Now, as we mentioned, this muscle uh, extends the wrist. So we're gonna do some techniques, like some pin and stretch techniques to, to um, try to get a release on this muscle. Once again, if I was just using my hand, my, 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 uh, my, my thumb, I would, what I would do is I'd, I'd actually bring the wrist into extension because that's when the muscle's in a shortened position. And then I'm going to press down on the muscle and pull up towards my elbow and pin the tissue under it. And then extend the wrist and flex the wrist in this direction. As you do that, I would extend the elbow out, just like that. So you're gonna have the wrist extended, bring your thumb in, put pressure on the muscle, push in and pull towards the elbow. And now bring the wrist into flexion and extend out the elbow and give it a nice stretch, 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 as far as you can. Keep that pressure with your thumb, don't let it go. And hold it for a few seconds and then let it all relax. And I would do um, several spots along the, the length of the muscle all the way up towards the lateral epicondyle. Once again, get a little deeper, you can grab that, that, that spiky ball, same position, wrist is in extension, I'm gonna hold the ball down with my thumb. I'm gonna push in, pull towards the elbow. So I got the tissue pinned, and I'm gonna just get back into extension, extend the, um, I'm gonna get into wrist flexion, I'm sorry, wrist flexion, and extend the elbow out just like that. So that's a great way. You're pinning the tissue, and you're going from a shortened position to a lengthened position, which is gonna help kind of pull those adhesions apart in there. That's, this can also be done with the FF5. You can start the same way again. Keep the instrument at about a 45 degree angle. And then what I would do with this is as you extend the, uh, as you flex the wrist in this direction and extend the elbow, you drag the FF5 right up the muscle, just like that. Now it's okay, you know, there's other muscles in here. Obviously there's other muscles in this area. And you know, one of these other muscles might have a knot also, and that's absolutely fine. So maybe I'm working on I'm gonna hit two, three different muscles in there, in there as I do this faster release work, but that's okay. I mean, you know, you don't have to just single out that one muscle. I mean, we're gearing, we're focusing on the extensor carpi radialis brevis, but obviously there's other wrist extensor muscles in here. And if you feel knots in any of them, focus on them and, and, and work them out, okay? Another great way to, to really pin and stretch, I find is you, t you can take a neck lax from Okra Med Health here, and the, this shiatsu massager, which is primarily for neck areas, but we use this on bicep tendonitis, we use it on calves, and it's a great way to pin and stretch because what you can do with it is, and these massagers, you can rotate and, and, and move them into different positions. But what you can do with it is you can actually take this 
shiatsu massager right on that muscle and you actually can clamp down with this massager and it really pins the muscle in an excellent way. It really pins that muscle closed by closing this. And now from here, you can make that wrist flexion and extend out the elbow. And I'll tell you, I got this squeezed really tight. It, you can really feel that shiatsu massage and digging into that muscle tissue. It's an awesome way to do a pin and stretch technique. Once again, you just pin and stretch different points from the lateral epicondyle all the way along the course of the muscle. It's a great way to do a pin and stretch technique, okay? So that's our fascia release work. What, what, what's the preferred way to do it? I like using a combination, you know, um, obviously if you have nothing, you're gonna have to just stick with your thumb and your knuckles. But when I'm working on a problem on, on, a, on a patient or on myself, I like to do a little of everything. I'll get in there with the ball, I'll get in there with the FF5, I'll do some of the pin and stretch technique with the neck lax. I'll use a combination uh, of, of different techniques to get in there and, and um, break up this adhesion. You'll notice from just one session, the, the intense blood flow you get in there and it immediately loosens up. The problem is, is it takes more time to, to fully break up all that adhesion. So don't expect that one treatment's gonna cure this problem that's been there for six months or 12 months. This is something that needs to be worked. The fast release work needs to be worked every other day and it's gonna take several weeks to, to, to get this thing to release, okay? So uh, be, be consistent uh, with it. Don't give up after one treatment. So we're gonna move on to stretching the muscle out. I want you to do the fascia release work first. And the stretch is relatively simple. You're gonna find a, uh, get on the floor or use a table. And I want you to bring the wrist into this position. Just like that, keep the elbow straight and put some light pressure down on the, on, the, on the back of the hand just like that and hold it for about 30 seconds and perform it three times. When that's feeling comfortable, you can intensify it by actually bringing the fingers out in this direction and holding the pressure like that, okay? Three, uh, three sets for 30 seconds, nice and light pressure. This is a little bit of an awkward position for the wrist, so if you're not used to it, I want you to take it nice and easy and go very little pressure at first. But once you get used to it, apply a little more pressure three times for 30 seconds. Okay, so for some strengthening, uh, we're gonna do some wrist extension work. Now you can use a band, you can hold a dumbbell, whatever, uh, you can hold a, just a, neck, uh, a weight plate, you can, uh, whatever, but I want you to put the, the forearm down like this and grip here now. I'm gonna show you a couple different ways to do it. It depends on the pain level that you're experiencing. If this is a pain-free, because we don't want to do anything that's not pain-free. So on this extension, what I want you to do is in a nice, slow, controlled manner, I want you to, 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 to extend the wrist up, and I want you to make it in a three count, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and then I want you to lower the same weight, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. We want to use low resistance, high repetitions. I would use a resistance that we can get at least 12 to 15 repetitions on this. And I want you to do three sets of 12 to 15 repetitions. Now, initially, this portion, the, uh, the concentric contraction coming up like this may cause some pain. And if that's the case, I want you to just kind of pass by that. I want you to just kind of like use your other hand and prop up into this position. And I just want you to work the negative or the eccentric contraction. I want you to just lower it down. Thousand one. 1,002, 1,003, then use your other hand, bring it back up, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and perform 12 to 15 reps like that for three sets. Once it's feeling better, then I want you to do the full, the full range of motion, but initially, this portion of it, the concentric contraction, may cause the pain in that area, so I want you to, to, to skip that by just helping your, your wrist up like that, and then doing the lowering down type of portion, uh, portion of the exercise, okay? So um, follow that order, fast release work, stretch, and then you're gonna perform this exercise for three sets. All right, I hope you find that information helpful. Be patient about this. You know, tendons heal slowly and kind of unpredictably also. You know, it's not like a broken bone where the bone goes into, you know, the arm goes in a cast for six weeks and we know that the bone's gonna heal in six to eight weeks. It's different with tendons. tendons uh, are definitely more unpredictable. And that's why sometimes these injuries, I, I always feel like people give up on treating them too quickly. In other words, people will do 
two or three weeks worth of the work I just showed you and be like, oh, it's not working, they give up. You know, you gotta stick with it. Sometimes, you know, this thing can take, you know, four weeks, six weeks, eight, eight weeks, 12 weeks, who knows? But I mean, it can take some time. So you just have to keep working at it, okay? So best of luck to everyone. Stay young, train high, all right? Hey, listen, if you haven't done so already, take a moment right now, visit my website, www.okramedhealth.com. We have a full line of fast release products in stock. Everything that was shown on today's uh, video is in stock and in our, on our, in our, um, um, our website store. So pick it up. It really helps to have the proper tools to do the proper work, okay? If you haven't done so already, subscribe to my channel, Okramed Health. On YouTube, questions about exercises or injuries, just leave me a comment in the comment section down below. I do the best I can to get back to everybody. And don't forget, Oprah Health is here to keep you fit forever.